Yo, 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 what it do? What it be? It's your boy, A-N-T, repping the G-A-M-E, G-A-N-G. That's the game gang. You know we don't play none of that, all of that. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the five greatest quarterbacks of the 1990s. You know, I'm playing a little bit of Street Fighter 6. I've been having a lot of fun with this game, but that's not what I'm talking about here today. So today we got two honorable mentions before i get into the top five and the first one is a familiar name it's none other than joe montana he didn't have anywhere near the amount of success in the 90s as he had in the 80s of course i mean he was older plus he was traded by the niners to the chiefs but he still led the chiefs to a couple of successful seasons i mean they ended in the playoffs but smoking joe was still showing flashes of his former glory in kansas city so i couldn't leave him off of this list Just gave him a little honorable mention and of course the second honorable mention is warren moon who spent the first six seasons of his career in the cfl uh, he was putting up astronomical Madden type numbers. For example, if I added his CFL and NFL numbers, he would have 79,000 yards and over 400 touchdowns, which just blows every quarterback out of the water. But we only going to talk about what he did in the NFL, which is still a respectable 51,000 plus yards and 300 plus touchdowns. And it, it kind of makes you wonder what if he hadn't spent his first six seasons in the CFL. But since we can't go back and change history, Warren ended up never even sniffing the Super Bowl in his 17-year career, but he gets an honorable mention for becoming the first black quarterback in the Hall of Fame and putting up really good numbers, not just average, you know, he was really putting up numbers, him and Earl Campbell, year in and year out. They just never really had a defense there in Houston, but that's besides the point. But now that we got the honorable mentions out of the way, let's get into number five. Of course, it's Jim Kelly, who doesn't have as impressive stats as Warren Moon. But Jim Kelly led his team to four straight Super Bowls. Now, of course, he lost every single one, which is why he's at five, because he does have 35,000 passing yards and 237 touchdowns, which is better than some of the other guys on this list. But everyone else on this list got a ring, and the ring is the main thing, you feel me? I'm sure Jim himself would sacrifice some of those stats if it meant winning a, one of those Super Bowls he went to. So his lack of success is really what kept him from being higher on this list but number four is steve young who has three rings two of those were with joe montana being the starter but steve eventually won one without montana won the super bowl mvp and put up numbers rivaling jim kelly so of course he was going to get the edge at the number four spot because you know like i said the the ring is that thing that you need fam but let's move on to number three and it he's been a control controversial figure off of the gridiron but brett Favre racked up 71,000 yards and 500 touchdowns in his career on an efficient 62 percent completion rating for everybody said he was just a wild gunslinger bro who had some accuracy to him and he really almost led the vikings to a super bowl as a 40 year old man uh you know we had the whole greg williams uh bounty gate thing kind of derail all of that but he, even before that it's just still impressive that he got them there and he potentially could have won them another super bowl if they win that game but you know like i said can't do the whole what if game but he still got himself a ring and he won three straight nfl mvps from 95 to 97 and he has 321 consecutive starts which still stands as a record eli manning almost broke it but his head coach fucking hated him and benched him for Geno Smith and let's just be real Geno Smith was not playing like Geno Smith is right now in Seattle he was playing like Geno Smith in New York but anyways his, his combination of record-breaking spots uh and winning a Super Bowl put him over Steve Young this is just in my opinion this is my list but his one Super Bowl really kept him out of being higher from number three but you know, like I said, can't do the whole what-if game. He did have some pretty good defenses, offenses throughout his career. But none like Troy Aikman, who is at the number two spot. And he honestly has the least impressive stat line on this list. But he got three rings, one Super Bowl MVP, 
And interestingly enough, he never won a regular season MVP. And I'm not trying to penalize players for being a part of a dynasty. I mean, look, he's number two in the 90s. But having Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin, Jimmy Johnson, Deion Sanders, I mean, he had an all-time great defense and offense and, an, and a Hall of Fame coach. I mean, he had it all. So, I mean, I'm not necessarily penalizing him. He just couldn't be my number one, even though he, he has the most touchdowns on the or on the most Super Bowls on this list. But even with all that success that Troy Aikman had, it was really hard for me to put him at number one, especially with the lack of a regular season MVP and his lackluster stat line. My number one on this list, he won back-to-back Super Bowls with an all-time great defense, sure, but offensively he was working with six-rounders, undrafted free agents, and kick return specialists. Of course, I'm talking about John Elway. And sure, the sixth-rounder is Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp, and the kick return specialist turned into Hall of Famer Terrell Davis. And, you know, the undrafted guy was Denver Bronco legend Rod Smith, but the difference is... Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin were going to be great regardless of which team you put them on. Emmett, we can maybe debate his greatness in a future episode with the all-time running backs. But you ask any fan of football, who would you rather have, Terrell Davis and Rod Smith or Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin? We all know the answer. And even with those better receivers, Aikman numbers... Aikman's numbers pale in comparison to Elway, who had 300-plus touchdowns, over 50,000 passing yards. Sure, Aikman played less time, but that's Jerry Jones' fault for ruining his own team, and that means John's got longevity too. So that you know, he that's another point for John, and that means uh, John Elway is the greatest quarterback of the 1990s. Two rings, a Super Bowl a- uh, MVP. He has two. Uh, He has the same amount of Super Bowl MVPs as Troy Aikman, right? And Troy Aikman won one more Super Bowl. So, just you know, he had one more chance to win more MVPs, but he didn't. Didn't even win a regular season MVP. And sure, I mean, he won it. John Elway won an MVP in the 80s. He didn't get it in the 90s. But Favre was, you know, he was winning all those MVPs and too busy not winning rings. But Aikman won none. He won zero. MVPs went to more bowls and still only got one Super Bowl MVP to show for it. So Elway got a ring, uh, two as an executive, which I don't think anybody else on this list does, or anybody else in the future videos that I'm going to talk about does either. For now, but those are my top five quarterbacks of the 1990s. If you you liked it, go ahead and leave a like. If you had any disagreements, maybe leave a, a dislike and maybe comment on some of the changes you'd make to the list. You know, I'm always interested to hear feedback and all of that. Uh, Go ahead, if you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe and hit the little uh, notification and all that so you can stay tuned on all the hot content I got dropping soon. I got this video. I got uh, the greatest quarterbacks of the 2000s and 2010s coming up soon. And I believe one more hip-hop history video left to do and then i'm going to be switching over to another two projects that you know i that are mainstays on my channel probably some history mysteries uh something like that stay tuned like i said y'all but uh, it's been your boy a n t repping the game gang you know we don't play none of that all of that and yeah i've been having a lot of fun with this street fighter y'all i really have been ever since i i done deleted call of duty and uh, freed up some space on my memory so I, I can play some of the games I've been wanting to play <laughs> since Call of Duty been, you know, it take it took up more than half of my space, y'all. So I'm just like, yeah, glad to have that out the way. When I get my memory card or something or the memory storage for the five, maybe I'll get back on Call of Duty. But for now, I'm having a lot of fun. Playing the Street Fighter, playing some RPGs. I've even been playing some of the MLB, the show 22. I ain't got 23 yet. I might wait for the price to drop on that a little bit. But cop the show. I never didn't really play it a lot the first time I was playing it or the first time I had it. But now I'm kind of learning more about baseball and all that. So 
and it's the only sport that's on for the next three months, so I figured why not try and maybe not get some gameplays, but just have some fun, learn how to play the game, the sport, all of that. But yeah, I've been having fun with that. Street Fighter, of course. I mean, y'all will see me be doing a lot more gameplay videos on that. Like I said, I'm done with COD, y'all. I'm boycotting Call of Duty. I'm done. I'm, I, I cannot support them or madden no more they they cannot get an i don't know what you heard about me but madden ea can't get a dollar out of me son they can't not through madden uh, activision whatever all of that they're not getting no more money out for me bro i'm just done and until you know they change or something i'm hoping when x defiant comes out that kind of changes things i'm hoping that they can revive the fps because the, the, the first person shooter genre are pretty much dead right now <laughs> call of duty and about if call of duty is the only thing that's out right now and the only thing we got pretty much is what maybe overwatch apex stuff from last gen and i mean the 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 letdown that was battlefield 2042 that's all we got right now yeah i'm cool on all first person shooters until further notice i'm strictly with mortal kombat and street fighter and tekken all dropping in the same calendar year i'm definitely going to be on all three of those i'd rather get body you know solo in a fighting game than go solo in call of duty nowadays and get bodied by seven motherfuckers all hiding in one room or you know got one side of the map on lockdown got your whole spawn all kinds of fucked up because Call of Duty don't know how to fix 10 year old problems. Madden's even worse. Madden hasn't changed anything of significance other than their ultimate team in years. I mean, when you got MLB, NHL, and NBA all pretty much shitting on your sports franchise game, wrap it up, sir. When, when I'm playing MLB games over Madden, that's how you know Madden is bad. It is ter It is trash. So I'm done with both of those. Uh, figured I <laughs> I ended this video off a little a little rant like, but I, I finished my main topic, my main point. That's all that really matters. But hope y'all have a good one. Like I said, it's been your boy A N T. I got a few more minutes left. I was I've been going crazy with E Honda. I figured if I learned E Honda and Zangief who don't have any fireballs. Or anti air. I mean, Zangief has a really good anti air. Let me stop capping. But E Honda really don't have nothing. I mean, he got some really good rush down if you can get there. But listen, I be getting mixed up sometimes. <laughs> Especially, I just lost. I went from bronze five to bronze one, back up to bronze three in one day with Zangief. That's that's how bad I was. I was getting worked. I could not buy a game, but. It was fun. It was. It's not like um, I felt cheated or anything. I was just like, damn. Like I am just not. I gotta learn bros strings. I gotta learn how to pl actually play this fucking game. I can't just, you know, sit in a corner like Call of Duty or something. You know, I actually gotta learn how the game works and become better at it. And even if I didn't, you know, they still have a really good uh, story mode. The Street Fighter. Uh, what is it? World Tour mode? That shit is phenomenal. It's a, it's, it's really great. It gives kind of like a, like a Yakuza kind of, uh, feel to it. And I never even played those games, but I've heard they're really good. <laughs> and if Yakuza is like that, I mean, I would, I'm not going to play it, but, but I can appreciate the fact that Street Fighter learned the sauce, learned the, learned the recipe and, you know kind of used it to their advantage I, i've been really fucking with world tour mode i haven't even i've been in battle hub too listen i'm not even gonna try that until i get better at the game or something or until i can learn classic controls right now i'm just you know i'm i'm just on modern trying to because I, I can never do the inputs but i've been i've, I've been studying videos lately on how to do how to get better at the game, do inputs, so I might switch to classic mode real soon, but right now I've been having a lot of fun on modern, it's a lot easier to get your shit off, but again, that that 20% little damage boost that they give you for classic, 
I might need that, man. Because that shit be... I, I be watching my shit just drain down. Pause. Like... What, meanwhile, I'm getting mixed up by Ryu or, or something, like... Especially on Classic. I want a little fucking sweet chin music. You've seen it. Just drain my whole bar. I was like, nah, let me... Let me go ahead and give you this this 30 sack of work. You got the 3-1. Or the 2-1. See, once I get, once you get in with uh, with Honda, his pressure is really, really cold. Oh, and command grabs are really OP. Honda's and uh, Zangief's command grabs. I really need to start utilizing uh, utilizing them a lot more when the opponent is close. But I do enjoy stringing together shit like that. Boom. But, yeah, and one thing I do need to learn how to do is block. I feel like I never, I'm never really effective at blocking. But, I, I mean, in this one, I was using, I mean, the parry. I was kind of going crazy. I was using every kind of tech they were giving me. So, I mean, I'll take it, you know. And I didn't even really, I don't think I used the Oicho throw. Not one time, I don't think. I was really just piecing him up with the thousand hand slap. <laughs> Real talk. Oh, yeah. And get that critical art for the critical finish. Hope y'all enjoyed the video again. Yes, sir. Been having a lot of fun with this. Can't wait to show y'all more gameplay videos I got. Stay tuned, y'all. It's been your boy. I'm out. Peace.